Hello, Vloglog. How are you doing? Um, we need to talk about vaccines this week. Like, we really, really do. Um, after Jocelyn's video, so the, uh, I don't mean to call, call her out, but I kind of do as well. Um, Jocelyn mentioned that, um, she's never gotten a flu vaccine. Um, which is fine. But the problem for me is that it's not said apologetically. Um, I should say that there have been a few years where I have forgotten uh, to get a flu vaccine, but I feel really bad about it. Um, and I'm terrified by the idea that we kind of approach these things uh, as casual. Um, I think there's a... Oh, man. It just, it, it really... It scares me, and I, I was I was irritated by it because so so Justin mentioned that there are studies that that, that she had read um, a uh, a study uh, presumably a meta analysis based off of other papers um, didn't I I don't know what uh, reports they were uh, Justin if you have the links to the studies I'd, I'd love to take a look but um, indicating that they were less efficacious um, than would once have been believed. The thing for me, though, is that there's very little evidence that there are significant complications. Um, and so even if you're dealing with um, an influenza vaccine, which, you know, obviously is going to vary as far as efficacy is, uh, goes from, from year to year, um, the, the cost, um, both financially and in terms of time and in terms of, you know, potential uh, side effects and harm, is so minuscule that even a, a minor... Um, you know, a, a minor uh, reduced risk of uh, getting the flu is, is very much worth it, and especially when you consider um, the aspects of, of herd immunity and the, the fear that you may con you know come in contact with someone. I just, there's a... Uh, I can't imagine having to, like, realize that, you know, if it were ever to come to light that I come into contact with someone and that I was carrying flu antibodies un unbeknownst to me, and that they suffered serious harm uh, because I just didn't, uh, you know, di didn't, didn't get a flu shot because meh. Um, to me, that's that's kind of the terrifying, and it, 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 that that may just be a me thing. I, I think about that when um, you know people talk about drunk driving, and obviously it's it's very terrifying for uh, you know this, the, one of the things about drunk driving is that so often. Um, yeah, you know, there are victims that are completely innocent. They did absolutely nothing wrong, and you know they were uh, hit by someone who was uh, drinking and made the decision to to drive. Um, but I also have that whole feeling of like you know, if, imagine the imagine that you were the person that decided to to drive, and now you've kind of got to live with uh, the consequences of of what happened as a result of that. Not to say that they should be absolved, but. Um, Merely just the that wow that is a terrifying place to be as well, um, and I think it's it's probably true with vaccines as well. Um, so there were two things that I kind of wanted to bring up. Um, one is that Jocelyn mentioned that she's she's never had the flu, uh, or has perhaps only had it once. I'm scared about that that was brought up because I think there's um, it indicates this big logical fallacy that we have where um, we assume. Uh, causation. We, we, we draw um, conclusions from information that may not be related. Um, the fact that um, you've never had the flu in the past has no bearing on your likelihood of contracting the flu in the future. Um, the fact that you may be uh, perfectly healthy now has no bearing on the extent to which um, you're getting vaccinated impacts herd immunity. Um, and I, But at the same time, I also understand this is a very, very easy uh, thing to do um, that if we it's the it's the availability heuristic um, you know very well known if I'm the type of person who has never gotten into a car accident I'm likely to underestimate the number of car accidents that exist if I'm if I've been in 17 different car accidents or I've been into in a car accident very recently I'm likely to overestimate um, because you know our, our brain substitutes the question of probability uh, with the question of availability that we use that as a heuristic for determining um, if you the the example I think in uh, 
uh, Daniel Kahneman's book is if you ask, um, you know, if I were to ask you how many murders do you think there are in uh, Michigan, that your answer based on whether or not you live in Michigan will be different. Um, and if I were to ask you how many murders do you think that there are in Detroit, oftentimes when they give this question to, to different people, the pe people will assume, uh, people will give higher estimates for Detroit than all of Michigan. I, obviously, once you think about Detroit being in Michigan, then you know that that goes away. But the availability of it, that you know, we have this. Oh yes, uh, I you know I associate this thing with that thing, and you know we replace the question. Um, so that scares me. The the other big thing, and I think this is um, kind of the question that I want to put forward to vlog log in general is um, kind of about how we know things um, and how we manage knowledge today. Because I feel like, um, to a certain extent, our parents' generation, perhaps our, their parents' generation, um, there was no expectation that you would read information about health, right? Um, and, I, and I think the part of part of my fear here is that if we're easy, if if we're able to discount flu vaccines then we've kind of lost any uh, ability to criticize people who uh, don't vaccinate their kids for other harmful things um, that it's you know it's a hypocritical thing to say I, I'm not going to get the flu vaccine um, and, and still insist that um, it's irresponsible for other people not to get vaccines for other things um, but the, the challenge I think now is that, you know, I'm obviously not a medical professional. Very few of us are medical professionals. Um, and yet there is sort of an expectation on a, on a cultural level and on a media level that this is information that we want to know and we want to judge for ourselves. That, you know, a study comes in that says, you know, the flu vaccine is less efficacious this year. A study comes in and says, you know, uh, there's... Uh, you know, avian flu over here, there's this thing, there's that, uh, Ebola. Uh, here's, here's the thing, is that in discussing Ebola treatments and that sort of stuff, why is this anything, why is this our business at all? Um, I'm concerned with the fact, like, when the Ebola big scare happened, um, the majority of us read stuff about it or heard about it or whatever, um, and yet it's not an actionable thing. It's not something that we can actually respond to. Um, you know, maybe a few of us washed our hands a little bit more, but really this is, this is something where the information should have been made available to health experts, but isn't necessarily something for which the, the knowledge of the, the, for which uh, the public having that knowledge is helpful. Um, and my fear is that whereas our grandparents may have, may have been in a position where if they got sick, they went to the resident expert, the doctor, and it was the doctor's responsibility to try and keep up to date with that stuff. And now we have this whole idea that we are, uh, that we have, that we can exert control uh, over all of, this, all of this information. And there's a real risk that we can be overconfident in our knowledge of a particular field because there are too many fields for us to be an expert in all of them. You wouldn't ask your doctor uh, how to build a boat. I don't know why that's, <laughs> that's the example. Um, but the idea is that we had people that were much more specialized and I, I think it was probably easier to some extent, obviously there were still big problems, but it was easier to some extent to say there, there are going to be people whose responsibility is to have this expertise and I'm not going to second guess it um, because, you know, even speaking about uh, the flu vaccine, I've only read a couple of peer-reviewed papers. Um, I don't have a good sense. Uh, I mean, I've, I don't have my academic licenses anymore so there's very little that I can get access to but that's a whole other thing but um, my fear is that it's far too easy for us to adopt the responsibility for making decisions on things um, without doing a necessary amount of research
And it's entirely possible that Jocelyn has read 90, you know, 900 different papers um, on the eff efficacy of flu vaccines. But I don't, I, and, and it could be that I'm being very unfair, but I suspect that that's not the case. And I'm concerned with the degree of confidence that we have in making these sorts of decisions that have a very big impact on our own health and perhaps more importantly, the health of others. And the fact that we have this sort of rigid sense of individualism, at least in the United States, can cause real problems when it comes to these um, optional decisions. So I'd love to hear Vlogalog's thoughts on that because I, I just, I felt like I, I had to I had to respond to that because the not getting a flu vaccine feels really troublesome to me. Um, so, yeah, I <laughs> I will talk to you all next week. Bye, Vlogalog.